This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this season of newness, Lord, new beginnings, Lord, new life, Lord, new opportunities, Father God. I thank you that you set us on a righteous path, Father God. You lead us beside still waters, Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you restore our soul, you renew our strength, Father God. Thank you for recompense, Father God. Thank you for giving back what the enemy stole, Father God. Thank you for giving back lost time, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So um, I'm led on here to share some more lessons learned um, in this in this. Um, period that I've been in and the first thing that the Holy Spirit want me to share is the patterns I learned the patterns okay so it was about um, maybe it was within the last seven days um, probably was at the beginning of this week maybe like Monday or Tuesday and we have like this group chat and in the group chat like I was just I was feeling really good and 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 um the way that it resonated with me or in words to me was like I felt like ice was thawing off me like I felt like I was coming back to life like I felt like like getting up and going out and doing something and um like I just felt lively I just I just felt like I was I was just literally emerging from being frozen or something and so in the family chat I said I feels the ice thawing off me and I was like, I was being, I was being silly, but I was being serious too. And, um, and, and then, you know, I kind of was thinking on it and I was processing how I was feeling. And I was thinking like in another season, I would have been ready to go out and get into some trouble. I would have been ready to go out and make some unhealthy decisions. And when I say unhealthy, I mean unhealthy or not good because they did not involve me consulting God first. Okay. Um, it made me really think about in uh, 2010 or 11, one of those years when I had been in that terrible relationship and um, I was in the house and, um, um, you know, I was, I was physically under attack and um, I, st I didn't know what else to do. And so I started jumping up and down and screaming, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And the person who was um physically attacking me or after me like they started pacing the floor back and forth and they ended up calling 911 and saying y'all better come get this bitch before I kill her and um I ended up when they hung up I ended up calling back and um they ended up leaving before the police got there but you know after I came out of that season I didn't say, you know, I realized that God has saved me. I realized that, you know, I had been delivered. I realized that, um, I realized that God had saved me, but I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't wise enough to say, Lord, where do I go from here? What would you have me to do now? Do you want to use me? I'm available to you. So instead when literally about when the spring came, I just, I felt lighter. You know, I, I wasn't, um, physically, I wasn't in bondage. Mentally, I was still in bondage. I had been delivered, but I was like those Israelites who they wanted to go back to bondage. They, they didn't want to keep pressing forward to go to the promised land. So I, I, I just went back to what I know, going out and stuff like that. And I got into another unhealthy relationship. And so the Holy Spirit was showing me like, um, it, the Holy Spirit was just bringing back to my remembrance that process and showing me the growth, showing me how my eyes are open now, my ears have been opened now, and um, showing me how I fear God now, how wisdom has been added unto me because now I know to consult God before I do things. I know to ask God what is his good and acceptable will to me instead of just seeking my own will. And so, um, um, where am I? Okay. So, so God is leading me to share that, um, if you are make, if you are saying something like, um, 
you know, let's say you got out of a relationship. You're like, oh, well, my next um, relationship is not going to be about like my last relationship or my next boyfriend, my next girlfriend is going to be better. Or, you know, this next job is going to pay more. The next person is going to see my worth. Um, um, just something like that. Then God is saying, you're still missing the mark. You're still missing the mark. Because what he's saying is, what we should be saying is, he said, if you're saying this, you're missing his standard of excellence and his best for you. Our measurement of better is not equivalent to his best. Our better is inadequate. What we should be saying is, Lord, what would you have me to do now? This is the million dollar question. Only when God is the bullseye or target are you on track. Even when you aim for God, if you fall short, his grace is sufficient. But if you don't even aim for him, if you don't even target him and you fall short, you're going to have grace to help. But it's not going to be like if you would have at least targeted for his plan for you. If you would have at least asked him to go before you. If you would have at least said, Lord, how do you want to use me? What do you want me to do? Do you want me to be still? You know, what do you want me to do in my business? What do you want me to do in my job? How do you want me to... Um, you know, with my children, um, in a relationship with my family, where do you want to use me in my community? What do you want to do with me, Lord? If we're not inviting him and giving him the opportunity to at least speak to us, you're missing the mark. You're cheating yourself. You're missing his standard of excellence. You're missing out on his best for you. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So his heaven is higher than earth. So his thoughts and his ways are higher than ours. Okay. So that's the first thing. Whatever transition you find yourself in, God wants you to invite him into that decision-making process. He wants you to allow him to go before you into prayer to prayer the way. He wants to reveal things to you. Jeremiah 33 and 3 or 3 and 33, one of them says, call unto me and I will answer thee and tell you remarkable things about tell you remarkable things that you know not about things to come or God wants to reveal himself now, okay? Um, the second thing is chewing the cud, chewing the cud. It was in, um, one of the first five books of the Bible, either Exodus or, uh, Leviticus, probably in Leviticus. Um, uh, this is probably in Leviticus and, um, God was telling them what animals they could eat. And he said, you, you know, they are supposed to eat animals that chew the cud. Okay. And this means when I looked it up online, it means I, Excuse me, it means the portion of food that a, uh, that a ruminant returns from the first stomach to the mouth to chew a second time. In other words, it's a it's kind of like a complex or a, a, a multi-layered digestion, digestion process. The portion of food that a ruminant, like a sheep, a goat, um, you know, certain animals return from the first stomach to the mouth to chew a second time. Okay, another definition says... Uh, further true, partly digested food. Another one says, uh, think or talk reflectively. Okay. Another one says, oh, and then for me, I say it, it's a process or feel it's to process or filter multiple times before digesting or regurgitating. Okay. And so what is the Holy Spirit saying in this? The Holy Spirit is saying that, you know, when you hear something, if a thought enters your mind or whatever, this is the symbolism this is symbolism here. You got to be that, that, that disciple that chew the cud. You have to take what your what, what message is coming at you. I don't care. If, I don't care if it's the pastor, you know, um, a, a brother or sister or parent, a, a TV show a radio, you know, an author you admire, whoever it is, you got to be that, that disciple that chews the cud. You can't just, you know, um, be eating a food from any table or from anybody who's serving you anything. You have to test the spirit by the spirit. You have to hear the message and test the spirit by the spirit. Well, how do you test the spirit by the spirit? Jesus Christ and John, I don't know if it was six and 63 or is, is somewhere in the book of John, I believe chapter six, but he says the words I speak are spirit and they are life giving the words that he speak, the words that Jesus speak are spirit and they're life giving. So if Jesus speaks words that are spirit and they're life giving, that means somebody speaking words of spirit, but they not life giving. They're life taking. 
They, they're stealing, they're killing, and they're destroying, okay? So how do we test the spirit by the spirit? Well, you test all of the words that you hear by the word of God. You test the words that you hear by the only true and wise God, by the word which he spoke to see if it's life giving or if it's deception. Okay. So you test the spirit by the spirit. Um, you test what you hear by the word of God. And then the Holy spirit had me think about, this is also why it got to be chewed multiple times, or this is also symbolic here. Remember in the parable of the farmer, he sowed the seed. And some of the seeds he sowed, they fell on fertile ground, meaning the seed, it fell on the ground. So the ground received it, but then it also was the, the, the ground also consumed it. The ground also consumed it so that it could take root and so that it could bear fruit. Now there was a, a ground that, that it, it was a, a scenario where the seed fell on the ground but then the birds came and devoured it. In other words, that's like when God speaks a word to you, when he gives you a vision, a dream or whatever, but then you let it be snatched by the, concern, by the concerns of the world. You let it be snatched by lust. You let it be snatched by something. He gives it to you, you receive it, but then you don't, you, you know, you don't, you don't keep processing it. It, it never passes, um, that first process you regurgitate it okay it, it don't it, it doesn't it doesn't go down into you and bear any fruit and then the other one was um the other one was on stony ground which means like it, it don't even it it, it 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 just it basically didn't do nothing you didn't even digest it you didn't even receive it, it it's like it's a stony heart it's like a hardened heart so it it never you know went down um, so that's that, um, as I was talking, I felt like it was something else and I kind of forgot it. Um, yeah, um, basically you just have to consult God. Also, you know, I've been talking to people and, you know, like they're going through difficult times. Um, I, I said myself, February was rough, but I made it out and I thank God I made it out. My mind is renewed. I feel lighter. And if you think about like the weather outside, right? Um, we surely spring is coming, right? God said, as his word says, as, as long as the earth remains, we're going to have seasons of, of sowing and seasons of, um, reaping. Okay. That we're going to always have these hot seasons and these cold seasons or what have you. All right. So right now, spring is coming. I don't care if it snowed again today. Spring is still coming, right? And so, you know, we had those periods of sunny days, but now we got some snow. But guess what? We're going to have some warmer days and so forth. We're in this transition period. See, in the dead of winter, it's, it's, it's easy, even though it's cold and it's bitter, it's easy because you know what to expect. You're not expecting spring. But now since we're at that transition, we're at the cusp. We're at the cusp right there. You're expecting spring, but you're still seeing winter. So it's difficult because you're expecting something different than what you're seeing. And then uh, there was some warmer days, but then it went back to the colder days. So this is just encouragement. Be not weary and well doing for in due season. You should reap if you faint not. This is just encouragement. Speak those things that are not as though they are. I hear the birds back outside. They're preparing for the spring. They're preparing because they know it's coming, okay? So, um, you know, say the word of God over and over. Sing the word of God. Cry out to God. Do what you got to do. Like I was telling my friend, um, you know, she, she was saying she financially straight. I was saying I, I am and I have been for like six months. And I was telling her how I started to write a check to myself. But then I said, no, I'm going to just be still. I'm going to just be, I'm going to just be still. And I'm just going to wait on God. And I'm going to say, you know what? I, I, I haven't been paying stuff like off completely like I'm used to. But God is still Jehovah Jireh. God has already planned um, to bless me financially. You know what? I, I, I've been in this period where, you know, loneliness comes and, you know, I desire this, this and that. But God knows the desires of my heart and he's still planning to give me the desires of my heart. You know what? So I agree. Yeah, it's dark right now. But guess what? God is still sending the light. God is still sending the newness. God is still um, sending blessings. God is still sending overflow. God is all knowing. He knows. He knows. Like that song say, He's know. He knows my name. He knows my number. He knows my location. 
He knows. And, and, and the provision is coming. The delights are coming. The joy is coming. The peace is here. I got peace now. Even though I ain't got the blessing yet, I got the peace now. Because the world didn't give it and the world can't take it, even though sometimes, you know, it gets dark. But I, I start speaking that life back. Um, but, you know, I hope this video encourages somebody. If I remember something else that I was supposed to say, I'll be back on to say it. But be blessed in Jesus name. Be encouraged. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Be content in the winter, knowing that the spring is just around the corner. Spring is coming. Hallelujah. Thank you. In Jesus name. Amen.